4641, you're go for TMI. After checking all systems on their spacecraft, the crew would take its last look at planet Earth as it prepared to leave the relative safety of Earth orbit. Roger, go for transmars injection. 30 seconds till burn. In 10 minutes, they would burn all the fuel in their upper stage rocket and begin the long coasting ride to the red planet. This would be the last time mission control could directly oversee a critical maneuver. 10 seconds till burn. Soon the spacecraft would be out of the range of communication. Engines armed. Five, four, three, two, one. The end of the burn would signal the first momentous step for a six-month journey to Mars. With the upper stage rocket and its fuel gone, the crew would have reached the point of no return. The same upper stage rocket that took Apollo to the moon could be used for the journey from Earth's orbit to Mars. Returning from Mars is where Zubrin's machine comes in. He would split every Mars mission into two launches in a plan called Mars Direct. In your first launch, you fire off to Mars an unmanned payload consisting of an Earth return vehicle. Okay, this is a little rocket ship that's going to be used to fly back from Mars to Earth with a crew of four astronauts in it, but no one's in it right now. It flies out to Mars unfueled. Its fuel tanks are empty. And once it's landed on Mars, it makes the fuel and oxygen it needs to come home. It takes perhaps five to ten months to make the fuel. Of course, the people on Earth have monitored this, so long before the next launch window opens up, we'll know we have a fully fueled Earth return vehicle waiting for us on Mars. The crew would land their spacecraft within a few miles of the return vehicle. When the time came to leave, it would be abandoned. Because Mars Direct is economical, NASA mission planners like John Connolly embraced the idea with only a few changes. The major change was to put a large return spacecraft in Mars orbit so that when the crew blasted off from Mars, they could transfer to something with a little more legroom. But the basic idea of living off the land had taken hold. When we're going to Mars, we're going to start thinking again like the pioneers did. We're going to start using the land for our subsistence as much as we can. If you think about the early pioneers that pioneered the American West, they didn't load up their Conestoga wagons with their logs to build their log cabins. They went to wherever they were going in the Midwest and they started cutting down trees there. They lived off the land. They started growing their food there. They didn't bring it all with them. If they, if they tried to bring everything they needed with them, they would have never made it past the Appalachians. We're going to Mars and